Hey, I'm Brock with Brock Entertainment. And I'm Amanda with Amanda Reed Weddings. And this is the I Do IQ podcast, where each and every week we're going to be discussing the latest in wedding and event trends. And we're going to let you know all the things that you need to know in order to make your event the most special. Yeah, and in the end, you will have the best wedding and event experience ever. And something tells me we're going to have a little fun along the way. I don't know about that. I'm a pretty serious guy, yeah, Amanda. Kind of and this is a serious topic, so... <laughs> Only seriousness. Serious business. This is the I Do IQ podcast. Let's begin. Welcome to the I Do IQ podcast with Brock and Amanda. Yes, this is actually our first real episode. The first episode was an introduction about what this podcast is all about. This, we're actually diving into it. Getting in there. Let's hear it. And we're going to, I mean, we are living in crazy times right now, we especially are. in our industry. Yeah. And we're going to get into that in just a moment. Uh, we're titling this episode, How to Unplan a Wedding, which oh, no. is weird to talk about. Yeah, it's especially... kind of heartbreaking. I'm, I'm a little, I'm still like really, I'm mourning this, honestly. Yeah. Right now. I'm still, I've not wrapped my brain around fully <laughs> what, what the rest of the year is going to look like either. You but know? before we get into that. Yeah. I want to know, what are you into right now in the wedding industry? So we're going to go happy, we're going to get it serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my obsession, my current obsession is the bridal pantsuit or the bridal jumper. Yeah. What is that? It's not a dress. It's not a dress. It's a different look. So I had a girl a couple years ago. It's like a bridal mullet. Yes, it's the bridal mullet. That's what it is. (laughs) So I had a girl a couple years ago, really fun bride, um, her initial dress, there was, it was damaged Uh in the shipping process or something happened to it. Eventually it was fixed, but she ended up kind of playing in the bridal shop in which they bought the dress from. Dress from, and this person happens to make um, passion. You know, she has a lot of pageant wear and things like that for girls, and so she had a lot of different options in the store to kind of play with custom sewing. And they started playing with the idea of this little jumper, a little halter style, wide leg pantsuit with like a side bustle kind of piece that was like asymmetrical, like to the left, and it worked out. So they they used that for the first look they she changed they ended up getting the other dress fixed so she changed dresses for this ceremony so she surprised the groom after having had a first look surprised the groom walking down the aisle in this big fabulous dress that she had chosen that also had pockets i know you love that (laughs) and then she changed back into the pantsuit for or to the to the jumper rather romper for the um reception so she kind of got the most out of this particular look. Right. But I'm seeing a ton right now of like a blazer with like pants like it and still for a very formal affair, seeing this really unique um, bridal look. I kind of think it's unique and different. You know, huh. I guess yeah. I just have to see it. I, you got to be the right bride it. too. I don't know that everybody could get by with it. Right. I think there's a lot of people who probably would look like they're trying too hard. But I think the right person who is a little fashion forward, maybe willing to take a few risks, I think it could be really interesting. Instead of carrying a bouquet, do you carry a briefcase? I think that's a brilliant idea. A white briefcase. A white briefcase. Maybe a little floral yeah. on the top. Or you could, could cover that. the whole thing in floral. A white, this might, you might be oh. onto something. You might be onto something here. I Man, like it. I, I'm picturing this. Yeah. This could be a whole could side a whole business thing. we do. Yeah. yeah, it could be cool. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so... So jumpsuit. Jumpsuit. Jumpsuit, romper, suit, blazer okay. kind of thing, whatever. Yeah, whatever you want to call you, it. You, you need to post a picture of that okay. on our uh, I Do IQ. I will make sure to get that posted. Social. For sure. I'll, I'll find some good images and send them over That'd to you. That'd be awesome. Okay, so my question to you. Okay. What music, what song right now has got your heart racing? What are you into? Uh, so in, in the wedding world of music, finding a good song in general uh, a new song is, is tough. Gotta be. Because people won't dance to songs they don't know. Yes. And if you're you're listening, you're like, I've always wondered why the DJ always plays the same music. Well, it's because if you play songs people don't know, they'll sit down because they don't know it. Whether it's Yao by Usher, but when it first came out, people uh, cleared the dance floor because really? they don't know the song. Yeah. Until yeah. they know it, they're not going to get out on the dance floor. I remember playing Party Rock Anthem when it first came out because I was working at a radio station. I'm like, man, this is going to be a killer song. Yeah. And it's good, like the dance floor is going to be packed. First time I played it, what? there was 200 Gone. people on the dance floor. They all left. I'm like, are you kidding me? I just wrecked this. This song is awesome. Oh, my god. Three weeks later, biggest song in the country. Interesting. But it just came out. Yeah. And that's when I knew, you know, I, uh, you got to wait till everybody knows the song before you, Fair you enough. play it. Fair enough. So right now, um, you know, it's I, I pray every year that somebody comes out with a clean, fast song that people are into. Yes. That gets you dancing. Yes. And is not 
a rap song. Right. Because older everybody... people don't dance to rap. Right. So the like uptown funks of the world and can't stop the feelings. Yes. Perfect. Gotta have that. If only we could get songs like that every year. Yes. So that being said, right now, my favorite song is a slow song by John Legend. Okay. Conversations in the Dark. Okay. Do you know that song? I don't know it. Oh. Ugh. I can't play it right now because yeah. we don't have the copyright. But give it a listen. Google it. Check it out. Okay. And it is really good. Okay. Uh, it's just a slow song. It's about love love and couples. Is it a good first dance kind of song? It's a great first dance song. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't take that weird turn where you're like, ooh, maybe that was a little bit inappropriate. No. Yeah. No, it's just a really good song about love and being in love and not about breaking up or having nice. lost something. Well, because I know you've had some of those too, where people pick this certain song and you're like, oh, really? That's not, yeah. Oh. Or like everybody loves dancing to Tennessee whiskey. Yeah. It's not really a love song. Not really a love song. No. It's, and a lot no. of, a lot of songs that people like, you're like, listen to the lyrics. It's I just not don't think that's the image great. you want to put out there. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then and there's okay. a lot of those, but, uh, yeah, Conversations in the Dark. I'm Good really to know. That I like right that. Okay, John cool. Legend. Okay. And and he has another song. I think it's called Good Night. Yeah. Uh, to, and it's about weddings. Okay. While it's not, I mean, it could be a good dance song. A lot of people won't dance, so I usually play it as background music. Okay. Uh, right before the dancing starts. Okay. But it's all about weddings. And I how. think he's awesome, though. I really do. I mean, I, I'm kind of obsessed with Chrissy Teigen, too, to be honest. Like, oh. She's just so funny. Like, she cracks me up every time, you know, all, yeah. all the social she posts. But, like, I'm kind of, he's kind of, he's kind of fantastic. I think he seems like, you know, obviously from the outside, I don't know him personally. Right. But he Shocking. makes great. Great love songs. He that's, does. Especially he seems like a good person about her. And, you know, you like supporting people like that. Yeah. So I think that's cool. All right. So that's what I'm into right now. I like that. Very interesting. Go. Next week, it could be something else. I, it I will know. be, and that's okay. All right. So I'm planning a wedding right now in our world. Uh, We're fit, sitting 10 feet apart. Yes, we, we are. We've been, We've been disinfecting everything. <laughs> Uh, we have not touched each other. Literally, we haven't. Literally. We just wave at each wave other across the room. Everybody in this room. If you're worried about our safety, we have been quarantining, and this is basically the first time we've been out. We yeah. came to the studio. It's been um, sprayed down. There's four people in here. They are sitting at the back of the room. Um, All specially socially distanced. Literally, probably. everything has been yes. sprayed, and Amanda keeps spraying. So I can't, I can't stop. So yeah, we I, we, we are also good. like Lysol right now. But everything has been basically canceled for about two months. Roughly, yeah. P pretty much have cleared the calendar for all of April and most of May. Yeah. Still, I've got a couple that are hanging on to their May dates, and I understand why right. they each have just individual don't know. reasons. Um, but yeah, cleared that calendar. We, you know, we had, I think, 11 weddings-ish over the oh, course of geez. that time frame, and we're having to absorb those into the rest of the year. Right, which is it's tough. It's tough when, we, when we've got a very carefully crafted schedule, and we're, mm -hmm. you know, we don't have the luxury of being able to do three weddings in a weekend. Right. You know, it's a little bit different scenario. And, you know, myself with two quote unquote full time people who also take on weddings and then another couple on top of that that take weddings. I mean, it's, you know, we're now looking at, I think, I think I was counting this morning, like 43 events in the remainder of the year. So from oh, wow. June through, yeah. Which so is a lot of a, events a lot for of a events. wedding planner, especially. It is. That's it a lot of work. I will say that the grace that I have on that is though, that the three or four of mine that we had to postpone um, thus far, um, the work is majority. It's completely, almost completely finished. I'd say we're 90% uh -huh. finished. And I think those girls kind of want to breathe from the wedding planning process too. They want to just be like, all right, we'll come back to it later. Yeah. You know, Moving on, and and you know, once we get back into normal life, um, I think we can kind of pick back up. But yeah. So when was your last wedding? Um, February fifteenth. Oh, fifteenth. Okay, mine was March thirteenth. Yeah. Friday the thirteenth, and then 13th. the crap hit the fan that next week. Yeah. And that's when everybody started quarantining, and everybody like getting emails. What's your policy? What yeah. are you doing? Yeah. And. I'm like, yes, we will reschedule. If we have the date available, mm -hmm. we'll do whatever we can to make it work for yeah. you. Yeah, and thankfully, most vendors have been pretty amazing about that. I um, um I had one March 21st, uh -huh. and that is right right after this all started coming yeah. out. So we're wrapping up the final, the final, final uh. details, working on seating chart, getting things, sending it to the printer, right? You know, the the days before, and um, literally, I mean, we had to, we made the call on Tuesday. We had to make, I mean, she held off because she was like, I just, is it as bad as I'm hearing? Is it as bad? I'm, I'm scared. I don't know. I don't know. And then it goes from 
you know, groups less than 200 to now groups less than 50 uh-huh. to now highly recommended, you know, less than 10. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, okay, yeah. I, you know, I'm going to support whatever decision you make, but here's what I know. Here's the information that I have. And, and based on that, here's what the vendors have said. And here's, here's where we are. So um, that one was the first to go. It actually wasn't the first to postpone, but it was the f- most, most immediately affected by it, I guess. Yeah. We had, we had a wedding that Saturday. What was that the 21st? First, uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, and the guy was like, we're doing it. Like it, do- it doesn't matter. We've cut it down to 50 people. Yeah. And it, um, he was suffering from, an illness um, not related to this, but just, a, I think, a terminal illness. Oh, dear. And wanted to have this wedding because he might not get to have it. Oh, my it. gosh. And so well, that's he made the call the day before because then they moved it to 10 people. Okay. And he's like, we just can't. We are going to reschedule. We'll let you know. Type of thing. Wow. But oh, that breaks my heart. Though. Even Even the people that were supposed to be there, he's like, well, Social distance. He's like, I just want to do this. I want this to happen. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I know it's tough for him to to have to postpone, but I don't. I, you know, I know how difficult it's been for me. I know how difficult it's been for all the other vendors. I I can only imagine how difficult it's been for these clients. Oh yeah. You know, they're they've planned for this day. Some of these people have literally Pinterested and had ideas and thoughts about what they wanted this dream day to be for years. Um. And they've waited till their perfect opportunity, and now it's all been like just wiped away. Yeah. So my heart is broken for these people, and it didn't really hit me until yesterday. I think yesterday was a rough day for me. I, I'd been great for about two weeks, mm-hmm. dealing with all the things we're dealing with and all that, and, and homeschooling my kids, which is <laughs> I'm not meant to be a third grade and or sixth grade teacher. I'll be honest. I love, love, love my my children's teachers more than already more than more than words, but um, you know in the midst of dealing with all that and trying to disseminate what the right information is that's coming because we're getting information daily that changes. Right. And depending on the news source, I mean, you're getting, you know, you've got all your Facebook news, which, you know, <laughs> we know what that's worth. But, right. then, but there is some validity to what we're seeing. And so anyway, so I yesterday hit me pretty hard. I just was like, I'm kind of exhausted. I'm mm-hmm. kind of exhausted. I've, I've been worrying and thinking and praying and, you know, just crying with these couples figuratively. Um, and you know, I don't, it finally hit me yesterday and I was like, I want to crawl into a hole and not come out for a while. I think I slept better last night than I have in a long time. Cause I just, yeah. I just crashed. But. Yeah. Cause we, we don't make any money unless we're doing events. That's right. And this has hit our industry, you know, some of the hardest because all event venues have been shut down. You yeah. cannot yeah. hold an event yeah. Yeah. when you can't have people there. Yeah. So, uh, you wrote an article called How to Unplan a Wedding. How to Unplan a Wedding. I which um, is an amazing article. Thank and you. But now more than ever, when you're planning a wedding, should you hire a planner or not? I think right now, everyone that has hired a planner is thanking God because you're having to not only plan their wedding, but now unplan the wedding. Undo all the things that have been Yeah. Done. Mm-hmm. That's been difficult. You know, I've dealt with unplanning a wedding before for a couple who's broken up. I've done that a few times. Not often, but I have had to, unfortunately, unplan a wedding before. Just basically unlay the tracks that have been laid. But not reschedule it, right? Not reschedule it. No, it's been complete cancellation. Uh-huh. What are we looking at? So it, it, that's a terrible experience, but... Um, at least there was kind of some finality to that. Right. I, and I'm, I, I don't know how to even put a positive spin on that because it's a couple breaking up. I don't, I don't mean that in any way other than at Better least you now know where you're later. Right, exactly. <laughs> so now these couples are looking at, okay, cool. So we postpone our April wedding until July. How do we know things are going to be cool in July? We postpone until August. How do we, I mean, how do we, we don't have a guarantee and there is, As of right now, there is no insurance company on the planet that will offer any sort of um, event coverage that will come close to covering something like this. I've heard a rumor that there is one that might actually, some of the couples that already had this insurance might actually be okay from, but you can't get it right now. There's no chance. And so that's what's, um, that's what's so unfortunate about this is that these people are just having to kind of blind, I mean, and myself included, blindly guess what's the best course of action? I mean, I, you know, we don't know information changes, like I said, daily, and we just have to make the best choices we can based on what we know. 
Um, I think that's why a couple of these couples are still holding on right now. Mm-hmm. They're a little, they're far enough out that they're like, you know, we might be okay. Let's give it, a, let's give it another week or two. We want to give it a little bit more time and see if maybe things change. Maybe if, you know, and I, I, I can't say that's the right choice or the wrong choice. I just think it's the choice that they've made for themselves based on the information that they have. Um, and I've done my very best to kind of counsel and guide them through this. And what does this look like if we, if we postpone to this date, here's what we do. And if we have to cancel outright, here's where we are. Um, it's been the, one of the hardest things I've ever career wise had to do. I will be very honest. It's been yeah. a really trying time for my entire team, you know, because I've got, you know, three other people dealing with the same exact issues mm-hmm. for all of their clients. And on top of the morning that we're doing for them, we're having to kind of pick up these pieces and try to try to stay strong and happy and sunshine and roses the best we can. And it's not easy. No. It's not easy. So what's the first step in unplanning a wedding? Um, not think, just in, in, in the time that we're living in right now, right. this crazy time, but just in general, what, what would you say the first step is? So I think right now the narrative is unplanning this wedding because of the current situation, but there are other situations in which couples have had to unplan, Right, you know, someone's ill or someone is not able to attend because of military responsibilities or a death in the family or a breakup, whatever that reason is. I think you've got to start with um, why, what's the reason here? You know, what's Uh the reason? And I think that'll kind of give you one of two different directions. Um, So let's go through those scenarios. Okay. So this, a a breakup is a lot more straightforward. Of course. You just need to let the vendors know this is not happening. It's not happening. What's our recourse at this point? You know, do, you know, you've paid this much at this point. Uh They're not canceling or postponing the wedding because, mm, we just want to do it later. No, this is not happening. You know, she found out yeah. he's done something terrible or whatever. Uh, he, They've had. Okay, it's always fair enough. he. It's not always he. In my experience, he found out he. she did something terrible. Fair enough. She did something. <laughs> or terrible. Or they found out they weren't compatible. They anymore. weren't compatible. Let's it was be a nice mutual about it. thing. It's always a mutual yes. thing, right? It's a mutual understanding. <laughs> yeah. So they've decided to break up, and so um, so we've got to start with the venue because they, you know, venue and photographer because those are the ones who most likely have been booked first. So we start with those. We look at the contracts, and we go to that person and we're like, Hey, here's the scenario. The wedding is not happening. It's not ever happening. What's our recourse? Uh-huh. Do we, you know, is there most likely there's not going to be a refund, but up until this point, what money's been paid, what money is, um, is due, right. you know, even if the wedding doesn't go forward. I mean, I've had experiences where couples, there's literally no more money. Like they, I've had people get into financial situations oh. and there's literally we don't have the money to pay for this because Zero. of job loss yeah. or because of a, you know, different situations. Um, what we've paid in is all we have. There is nothing else to, to give to anyone. Um, and, you know, we have to look at, okay, what's our, what's our course of action with this? Most vendors, if they're able, they have a heart and they're going to do what they can to help a couple. Right. We just know that regardless of what their contract says you have to understand when signing that contract that the law is on the side of the person who wrote the contract. They want, you know, that there's a contract in place for a reason, but know that your vendors typically, I mean, they have a heart. They want to help you. They're Mm -hmm. human beings. Um, Also, I am not an attorney and I'm not giving any legal (laughs) guidance guidance here. I'm just giving my experience and my personal opinion. But, um, and then to, to reach out to every vendor and let them know, Hey, this isn't happening. Um, Here's why. What's our recourse? Like, wh- where do we go from here? And then we've got to get, we've got to let the guests know because sometimes the invitations uh, have gone out. Yeah. Sometimes the invitations have not gone out. Or just play a prank on them and see who shows up. <laughs> <laughs> Throw the party the like, century. Wait, well, I'm here for a wedding. Uh, <laughs> What's going no, on? They broke up two months ago. <laughs> that is terrible. You didn't hear the news? Right. So we have had to- You just got to, punked. <laughs> <laughs> that is the worst punk ever. It's the worst episode I've ever heard But we, uh, did you bring a present? Yes. We would like you to still leave that present. <laughs> leave that by the door, please. <laughs> So, um, but anyway, you know, having to create some type of method and to get information out to people to let them know that this is not happening. Um, I follow Emily Post pretty strictly when that happens. I, uh-huh. I refer to my etiquette book and I word it exactly as it should be. And we send a little card and, the, you know, we're also supposed to return the gifts. As much as you joke about those gifts, uh, when the wedding is off, the gifts go back. And so, you know what? I don't. I don't know that Roy and Pam returned the gifts. I don't know that they had a planner to advise them. Yeah. I don't think Pam hired a planner. I don't think I uh, Stanley got his uh, 
Just toaster Cuisinart, back. He didn't get it back. <laughs> <Toaster. I> just, <laughs> so, <that's, laughs> big office fan here. Big office I know, fan. I know. Same here. I, I got your reference as soon as it came out. <laughs> so, you know, that's the hard part, though, is, you know, making sure that making sure that there's not any more financial repercussion than is absolutely necessary. Mm-hmm. Again, these vendors have held that date. Those vendors have held it on good faith, knowing that this event's going to take place and it's not fair for them to have to necessarily eat that. But again, a lot of them are willing to, to work with you. Right. They're, you Especially know, when it's, it's so close. Like if yeah. you're less than a month out, right. it's hard for that venue to book something. It's, it's almost or impossible. a DJ, hard yeah. for us to book something so knowing that your vendors have budgeted for your event so they've got three events in the month or whatever they know yeah. they've budgeted for what they know they have to bring in in order to make payroll uh-huh. in order to keep the doors open yep. in order to whatever that is you know we've got a that's something you've got to keep in mind as horrible as our situation is unfortunately some of these people that's the difference in putting food on the table and paying the light bill, right. unfortunately, it really comes down to that. And, um, you know, when we can, when we're in a position like that, especially if it comes down to something so close to the wire, a lot of times they'll offer instead of um, money back or instead of a, you know, no more money due, they might say that that event could transfer to someone else. It could be something that, you know, maybe or you have a credit rather, a store credit. Uh-huh. For um, a certain for a amount future, of time. Yeah, for yep. a certain amount of time. For a year, you know, you've, you've got, and I've had, I mean, I've had that situation. I had a bride last year who was ill, not able to have the ceremony. Um, and they ended up with um, X number of dollars in catering. And so they, I think they had oh, their holiday yeah. Christmas party, you know, with that. I mean, so I think, um, I think you've got to sometimes be creative in those circumstances yeah. as a vendor, but also as a client, you know, right. you got to think how can, how can we make the best of a, a not so great situation? So that's if you break up. Yeah. Right. Now, if something happens like a uh, coronavirus or just, uh, just jabbing in the dark thing. or <laughs> just in general, like if you get ill and yeah. have to postpone yeah. or, you know, something in your life happens where you have to postpone, mm-hmm. how do you unplan your wedding and move everything. It's so difficult. I'm not, I mean, it's difficult, but it's also It's difficult very, if you don't have a wedding planner. It's very difficult <laughs> without a planner. Um, because I will say most planners have a hotline to your vendors. They've uh-huh. either recommended these people or they've already made contact with them and sort of developed a relationship. Even if it's someone you wanted to work with that the planner doesn't necessarily know or work with, they've already established some rapport with that person. So, um, you know, you start, same thing. You start with your venue and your photographer, if we're right. looking at rescheduling, those are the two. Now, others others would probably disagree with this, but typically the venue and the photographer are the ones who are not going to be able to accommodate any new date. Um, most cake bakers can probably work with most uh-huh. schedules. A company like you that has multiple DJs can probably work within, you know, different schedules. Right. I'm not, that's not a blanket statement. I know that there are situations where it becomes difficult. You know, certain bakery is going to be closed at this time or, or whatever. Or certain dates. I, you know, I've I sent know, out yes. to, to uh, the couples who've had to reschedule. Right. We can't do this date, this right. date, or this date because right. we're all booked up. Right. Or I know we're going to book up. Right. So typically though, your ones who aren't going to be able to have much flexibility are going to be your venue and your, uh-huh. and your photographer. So we start with those two. What are your available dates? Where could we possibly move this to and keep as much of the integrity of the vendor team that we've built intact? Right. Um, because it's already, it's, it's already kind of magic to create this first vendor team, let alone to try to replicate that exact same vendor team six months or a year down the road. It just, it doesn't always work that way. We try really hard to, yeah. but sometimes, I'm sorry, the cellist just isn't available. He's got something he's got, he's already got on There's the There's only one of him. There's only one of him. And so you have to use that information to kind of put the puzzle back together, you know, put all the pieces back into place. Okay, we know this can work on this date. This can work on this date. It leaves this guy out over here and we're not going to be able to use him. But if he's the only one we can't use, then I think we've got to go over here and cut our losses. You know, whether that means we still owe him $500 for his time because he did, you know, whatever that means. Um, The tricky thing we're getting into with this situation is those that are having to push into 2021. Right. You know, venues only have certain dates available. And I've used, I've used this really rough math that say there's, say there's 10 venues in Northwest Arkansas. There's far more than that. We know that. There's over a hundred. Are there really? I didn't even know that number. (laughs) But say there's 10. Yeah. Okay. And say that those 10 venues were booked 
just on Saturdays for all of April and May. And that's all we're going to postpone for right now. So that's as of right now, that's 80 weddings that are displaced into the rest of the year. Only 80 Only, weddings. Yeah. Okay. And those 80 weddings are trying to plug in to the remaining Saturdays. And we're, you know, we're at, at best case scenario, nine months out from booking something at the end of the year. Yeah. Worst case scenario, three to four months out from booking prime dates. So very few venues are going to have many dates left. Prime Saturdays, let me say it like that. Um, there's more Fridays available and there's more Sundays available. Uh -huh. But that means you're going to have to maybe be creative and think about, well, would I rather do a brunch wedding on a Sunday? Because people aren't going to want to come party on a Sunday night typically. Like right. they're, they're, you can't have the same type of event. Um, a Friday night could be fun. I've had this conversation with one of my brides who's considering moving right now, um, moving her date. Um, we talked about, well, maybe if there's a Friday availability before a Razorback game, maybe it's kind of fun to have a pre-party before people come into town for the Razorback game. You know, maybe yes, that's, yeah. you know, so we're having to be creative in how we reschedule. Um, but also have to keep in mind that as I started to say, these venues, especially in other vendors have budgeted themselves this year for these events. Right. And now to have to move that and, and cut their revenues in half, essentially, they're not going to make money in 2021 because this event has maybe postponed into 2021. That's, it's scary for some of them. Some yeah, of them, that's a big struggle. It's a real big struggle. Especially with the venue owners. It, it is, it is. And I understand it's a business. They've got to protect yeah. this because they've got to turn the lights on. They've got to, they've got to pay the bills to be able to keep the doors open for the rest of the weddings. And so I completely I mean, and some of them have even said, you know, they're, they're in a situation where if they don't have these weddings, then they are in sincere jeopardy of being able to stay open. Which is awful. It's terrible. Because some of these venues are staples and some of the best they venues are. in Northwest Arkansas. They are. They are. So that's a big struggle right now. And so so my advice there is to be as flexible as you can um, if you're having to move dates. Nobody wants to have a wedding on a Tuesday. Believe me. But know that... Have you ever done a wedding on a Tuesday? I have not. I have. Have you? Yes. At wow. Pratt Place. Okay. And the wedding was for... Um, uh, Peyton Hillis. Really? Yes. Okay. He got married on a Tuesday because he had to be back at football practice on Wednesday. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> and you know Tuesday what? was their only off day. Okay, maybe I've done it on a Tuesday when it was New Year's Eve. I'll retract well, my that's, statement. Well, that's different. Okay. But this was just a random Tuesday. <laughs> right. And I Let's think the this. wedding lasted three or four hours. Yep. Ceremony, they danced, and then they jumped on a plane and went this is when he was still playing football. Okay. Went to Cleveland and... And I bet it was cool. It, it was, was kind of fun. Yeah. People, they still celebrated. They still enjoyed it. It's, you know, not ideal probably. Any karaoke, Careless Whisper by George Michael. <laughs> so that was, that was pretty incredible. That's a happy memory right there. Yeah. Okay. Like, freaking Peyton Hillis likes Careless Whisper. Heck yes, he does. <laughs> I so. love that. I love that. So, you know, I I don't know. It's it's Everybody's in a tough situation right now. That's the truth. That is the the basis of this whole thing is that everybody's in a tough situation and trying to figure out the best course of action. We all want to take care of our current clients without a doubt. That's our number one goal is to take care of those current clients. But we also have to keep in mind the future uh -huh. and to be able to service other clients right. in the future. And so that's my, I say this all the time, but my heart goes out to everybody dealing with this in every different aspect because it's not easy in any way, shape, or form. Um, and some of these venues are having to make really tough decisions regarding how they're going to handle a situation with a client because they don't have any other options. They can't refund their money. They can't go back and, you know, they can't move the date yeah. to two years down the road. I mean, they just don't have that option. And that becomes a really hard conversation between myself and the client and myself and the venue and I'm not just speaking to venues. I'm speaking to all no, vendors. Yeah. That just, that but that's just where it to starts. If the venue's right, not available, right. then you have to exactly figure something out. So having to have these really hard conversations that are just like, I understand where you're coming from and I understand where you're coming from. And we just have to find a way to try to meet in the middle yeah. somehow. And I've said this a few times, but like, if everybody gives a little bit, and I think people are, people are giving as much as they possibly can. But if everybody gives a little bit, we can all kind of get through this. Uh -huh. And it's for the most part, that's been kind of, that's been working. Yeah. You know, I feel like people are, they're, they're just doing all they can. So what kind of advice would you give to vendors in this time? 
And then we'll get to what kind of advice you would give to um, people who are planning their wedding or, or, or have already planned their wedding and are trying to figure this out. Oh gosh. I mean, and I, I don't think I'm saying anything that every other vendor's already thought, but try to remember that you were in this person's position once too. Right. Or maybe if you haven't been, that you might one day be in their position and that they're not making this choice any more than anyone else is. Like they're not choosing to move their wedding. They don't want to move it any more than we want to move it. Uh-huh. Um, and it, it it's, it's messing up every, everybody's plans. No, right. Um, you know, my summer vacation trip is canceled. I'm like every, you know, everything is just completely falling apart. We're not going to be traveling where we thought we were going to be for the summer. And everybody's You're going to the end of the street this I'm, summer. I am. <laughs> Instead of just staying in New York. I'm not even going to the neighborhood <laughs> pool because <laughs> right. I'm scared. I mean, you know, we're all scared. But yeah, so everybody, everybody's struggling. Remember that those clients, I mean, they're hurting the worst right now emotionally. Uh-huh. I mean, granted, some of these vendors, their pocketbooks are, pocketbooks are hurting. I get that too for sure, because people are facing layoffs, people are facing, you know, how do I pay my bills? Um, Yeah, so people who are planning their weddings are, some of them are going to be financially strapped now. Yeah, they are. And might not be able to afford what they normally thought they would have. I was talking to a bride the other day, and she literally, her fiance had been laid off that very day. Man. I mean, she's like, I'm not worried about it. He's going to go, I mean, we're going to, he's going to go work, be a stalker at Costco for $30 an hour. And it's going to be fine. And it's going to be his bridge job until everything comes. It'll be fine. But I mean, she was handling it really well. I was super very proud positive. of her. Um, but that's a tough, that's a tough mm-hmm. conversation for anybody. And so just my advice to other vendors, and I've had to try to keep this at the forefront of my mind is remember that you were in that position once too. You were this hopeful young couple, who, or maybe not, maybe not, maybe some people, it's could be older people getting married. Don't kind of age Maybe you're here. single or uh, whatever, but remember <laughs> that, remember that everybody is in need at some point yeah. and everybody needs a little bit of grace. Well, right this. now it's the only way we get through any of this is helping each other it's out. It's exactly right. And it's moving exactly right. the ball forward and, yeah. you know, doing it together. That's right. And that's, that's right. how small businesses like we have mm-hmm. will be able to survive mm-hmm. in in this climate and i don't envy the hard conversations that some of these people are having to have with each other um i'm doing my best to be an advocate for both sides like well here's your side and here's your side and i'm gonna let you all talk about it now yeah. i'm trying to give the information and then just sort of let the let the narrative kind of create itself and let them um have the conversation well one of my clients messaged me the other day and said you know we ended up just getting married like we had to do what we had to do. So we got married, but we still want to have a party. Right. But obviously we can't have that party right now. So right. we'll get back to you when we can have this party. I think that's a great attitude. You know, I've had a couple of different couples think about doing that. Yeah. Um, ultimately change their mind. One in particular, she's like, you know what? I've waited 29 years, 30 years for this. Uh-huh. If I'm going to do it, I want to do it on my terms. And I want to do it the way I want to do it. I don't want to just pick a date in November just because it's available. I want to have my wedding that I wanted. And I was like, fair Makes enough. Sense, yeah. I'm, I'm with you on that. And okay, that's fair enough. So we're going to hold off moving her date until we know for sure we can't have it. And then at that point, we're going to say, all right, new date. And in that situation, you know, I, I've got to respect her. I've got to respect her um, tenacity and her. She said, I'm not going down without a fight. <laughs> like I, and I love it because she's got it. She's at least able to, kind of laugh at this situation it stinks it's terrible it but does she's, stink. A, she's at least able to be like you know i'm gonna make the best of it and i you know why would i just give up all the things that i wanted just to kind of squeeze it in and make it happen because this is the time that's available for somebody else i'm just gonna wait i'll wait if i need to wait another year i'll wait another year so i, I did respect that conversation so. so so um what would you tell couples just to be positive as I mean, po- we're all in this can. together. We're all in this together yeah. in their song. Um, I And there literally is nothing you can do. There literally is nothing we can do about it. And, and if they continue to tighten the restrictions, or even if we're a backup in business by April, you know, Easter, I think was the plan. Even if we are back at that, what does that look like safety-wise for right. everybody else, for some of your guest list? So to, to couples, I would say, yeah, be positive. Do the best you can with what you've got. If that means, yeah, I want to postpone because you're, because you're very adamant about the type of wedding that you want to have. Know that if you are inflexible in your date or something like that, know that you may end up having to push back further. And uh-huh. that's 
Stay positive, be flexible would be my advice to couples having to deal with this. Stay positive. Yeah. I like that. And I've tried so hard, even just on my social media, to keep happy out there, you know, just to post the pretty, like keep things yeah. going in a, in a happy, people, I don't want to look at any more negative maps about. No, I I mean, that doesn't do anybody any good. No, you know? no. I wanna, it's, it's good to be informed. Yes. But. I want to look at pretty dresses and I want to look at pretty flowers yeah. and I want to look at happy people and puppies and, right. and, and things that are going to make us smile. Um, and, you know, yes, I want the news. I want, I want the accurate information, but I think in try, I'm trying so hard to stay positive and, and keep people's um, end game here at heart and yeah. know what they're ultimately wanting to do. Cause we will be back and we will, we will be, be stronger and, and better than ever. We're going to host the best parties I mean, and have the biggest weddings. Think about the party you know? that we're going to have, though, when we're all clear of this. <gasps> so, I mean, it's going Giving to be so many high fives and fist bumps, and, and everyone's hugs. drinking Coronas all yeah. around us. Like the, <laughs> the liquor, that no one will buy right now. Right? But yeah, because you don't. Yeah. You, even though it won't cause Corona. It's a negative really association, Do though. We, really know? <laughs> we my, my heart goes out to the makers of Corona. Like, I'm not gonna uh, lie. Oh, what an unfortunate name. I mean, I, yeah, it breaks my heart though, because I'm like, man, those people are like, they've got to be hurting right now. So just be positive. Yeah. Side note: Did yeah. you know that Tito's vodka is making hand, hand sanitizer? sanitizer? Yes. Have you seen this? I did. I love this. I think it's the greatest thing ever. I need to post about this. I meant to do that the other day, but yes. I mean, and like, it's what cool are, that Fox Trail Distillery did the same thing as well. I did not know that. Yeah, they were oh. making uh, both hand sanitizer and disinfectant spray and giving it out for free. I did not know that. Yeah. Love the local in that. That's very cool. Yep. Yeah, I did not know that that was even a thing. And I'm like, way to make lemons, lemonade out of lemons. I mean, really, like. I just I, do the old spit shine. Oh, not I. Rub my hands together. And that is why we worked were, as a kid. That is why we are far <laughs> apart in this room. Well, I, mean, I saw you when I walked in. Worked as a kid. <laughs> um, through this all, I think the biggest takeaway is: should you hire a wedding planner or not? Even yes. even in situations yes, not yes. such as this. Yes, yes. Yeah, what were you saying? <laughs> what? Even in situations not such as this, not as, you know, when we're not facing a global pandemic, it's still a very wise investment. I mean, because these people, myself, my team, my quote unquote competition, people who I have bonded uh -huh. with even over this, people who, you know, we've been texting each other constantly, like, all right, what's going on with you? What's going on? You know, trying to stay on top of what everybody else is doing. Um, you know, those people are your front line, they're your line of defense. They're your they're your connection to not having to speak to all these vendors yourself. Like they're the ones who are saying, okay, What's our course of action? What yep. are we going to do? What what's up next? What how can we how can we make the best of this situation for this couple, and can advocate for you to an extent? I mean, you obviously you know you you got to be involved in this as well, but that planner can can be your first communication. Um, so yes, 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 yes planner, yes yes. yes, 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 always. All right, yes. we're going to do a segment with all of our guests, um, and so let's start with just you and I. There okay. is called wedding opinions. Yes. So we got some questions and, and we'll do this which, with the, every guest that we uh, have on the show. Okay. But uh, the first one, bouquet and garter toss. Thoughts? Mm, okay. M I'll go with mine. Okay. No. This is a, a trend that needs to just go away. I hate it. And I'm the one that has to host it. Agreed. People, it, just think of yourself as a single woman or single guy at a wedding being yeah, called thrown out. out yeah guys hate it just because they do girls some girls get excited about it yeah but it's just it's a trend that just needs to die i don't disagree with that statement at all i i it, some people when they feel very adamant that they need to do it or they i'm like okay we can do that are you sure yeah <laughs> like uh, sure? Uh, the, I, I don't like the stick in the head under the dress no i mean i'm like her grandmother's sitting over there that is so painfully embarrassing like no i mean her parents are I, I just don't i don't enjoy that some people think it's they love it they think it's wonderful not my favorite now, the bouquet i can i can do more than the garter honestly like well it's really, a lot easier it is i've yeah. had some girls toss it out of the car i think that's right. kind of fun they throw it out of the car it feels very movie moment you know have you ever had the person that caught the bouquet and the garter the guy has to put the garter on that girl. That's a thing. Oh, I've never had that. Uh, uh, apparently, it's a thing on the East Coast. Oh, because I worked a huge wedding, and the wedding planner was from it was from Baltimore, and she's like, "All right, now we're gonna have the person who caught the garter put it on the girl." I go, 
no, we're not doing that. No way. She goes, no, it's a tradition. The, the bride and groom want to do it. I go, I don't think they know each other. And they're both with other people. Like, they had dates. I said, that's, that's weird. Super weird. I said, we're not going to do it, but let me go ask just to be 100%. So I went and asked the girl, do you care if that guy? And she's like, uh, no. No, hard pass. I go, that's what I thought. That's a weird tradition. Definitely not doing okay. that. Yeah, I, I'm seeing fewer and fewer people hold on to that. I really am. So I'm good with that. For Kids sure. at a wedding. Depends. Depends. So... I've had a lot of couples in the last year. I'm going to have a long answer for everything. Okay. Um, I've had a lot of couples in the last year or two listed as an adult only affair on the invitation because they don't want kids there. Um, and one even addressed it in her, in her website recently. And I love how she did this kind of did some FAQs on her little wedding website. And one of the questions was, do you, are kids allowed? And she was like, if your kid's invited, yes. If not, take this as a night off. Like we yes. want you to come and enjoy yourself. Exactly. You know, unless we've specifically invited your child because we have a special relationship with that child. Don't bring them. Don't bring them. No. Get a babysitter. Enjoy yourselves. We want you to come and have fun with us. And as a parent, why would you want to take your I kid know, to a wedding? I know, I know. Like I, at my wedding, when I was married, we had two kids there. Mm -hmm. They were the flower girls. Right. But I didn't want people bringing their babies. So we're doing our vows and you hear a baby crying. Right. I didn't want that. I agree. And then as a DJ being, trying to get a party going and the kids dancing on the dance floor. They're rolling around in the middle yeah, of the floor. And the yeah. adults just stand and watch yes. and don't dance. Yeah. I yeah. hated it. It's a so. different type of, I know, I know. Ugh. Some people are very adamant and they do. They've got a large extended family and I understand that. But I always... It's very, that's, a, that's a polarizing thing too. That's for sure something that people either feel very strongly about. Uh -huh. Like I do not want kids there. Yeah, I'm just not a fan. I'm, I'm on the fence because I, but I feel like my job is to kind of be on the fence with a lot of stuff too, right. you know? I can so see what about way. this one? Yeah. Guests bringing gifts to a reception. I don't know that I have an opinion on this. I have an opinion on it because the couple, <laughs> see, this is on my end of it. Though. Yeah, I don't have to deal with it. We got to deal with it. At the yeah. end of the night, we've got a stack of presents. First of all, we've got a stack of presents that's been sitting there inviting anyone who walks by to help themselves. Right. Cash, gift cards, whatever. Easy. I, easy cash. Bring easy. a card and put it on somebody else's gift or better yet there you go. guess what dillard's been bathing they will ship to the person's home they ship the which gifts. is nice that's what you're supposed to yeah. do and i really i and maybe well maybe people don't know that i maybe not do you PSA. put that in your um in the, on the online maybe they will ship this for you like the rsvp yeah, please maybe. don't bring gifts <laughs> please don't bring ship that. to this address they should yeah and i think people should know that but i mean and i think still People still do it. But then I think about at the end of the night, we're packing up, we're literally shoving all this stuff into the parent's car and 27 gift cards have been shoved into the same gift bag yeah. with three bottles of wine. It just seems to me that it's it, it's a little more trouble than it's worth sometimes. So and I, it's an antiquated thing. It is a little bit. Kind of like Bocaine Garter. Yeah, just, yeah. I mean, I personally, everything on, is online now. I prefer, yeah. Send those gifts, let them enjoy it at the house. They don't need, they're not going to even know that you brought it to the wedding right. anyway. Send it to the house so it doesn't get messed up. All that pretty wrapping. Open mic toasting. No. Negative, right? No. Save it for the rehearsal dinner. Yeah. Yeah. You get one or two people to toast. Yes. Fair they enough. know ahead of time. Room. Yes, agreed. And then you don't say, all right, anybody else? Because inevitably you get that person that you're not even that close to or that tells the worst stories. Awful. And you're like, oh my God. Or it lasts forever. Yes. Like, uh, we're done in an hour. And we're still talking. Yeah. Yes. Agreed. Like, let's move along here. I'm, I'm so with you on that. And I think a lot of couples, when they really start to think about it, they're like, oh yeah, I don't want that either. So they, you know, their focus is they want to party in and have a good time and dance with their friends. They don't want to sit around and listen to toast right. for the next four hours. So yeah. First look. I'm all about it. I'm all about it. That, well, and your definition of a first look. I'm sorry. First look prior to ceremony, the couple will see each other. Yes. Um, so he gets to see her for the first time in the dress instead of seeing her at the end of the aisle. Yes. I, I like yes. that too. Cause then you can get a lot of the pictures out of the way. Yes. It, it saves, saves a lot of time. Saves so much time. It get, I think for those who need each other, um, who, who need each other as far as nerves go, you know, maybe he's a little bit grounding for her and he kind of keeps her calm. Getting to see her beforehand or getting to see him beforehand takes away that yeah. nervous energy. Um, and I think the photos that come out of first looks are always so much better than at the end of the aisle. Right. And it's you way know? more intimate, way especially more, especially if it's done right. Agreed. Agreed. So much more intimate. I've seen some that I'm like, Oh, almost not quite, but I've, yeah. but by and large, I feel like those are, I love that trend. I hope it sticks around for a very long time. And I think, 
think when people, I mean, obviously I'll work with whatever they want to do, but then, you know, if you don't do your, your photos until after the ceremony, you've got all the family photos, all yep. the wedding party photos, all the couples photos, you're an hour and a half into the reception before you even arrive. Exactly. So yeah, I'm all for it. Cake cutting. Yeah, you got to do cake cutting. It's fun. I'm not into the smash. No, not a cake no smash, smash. No smash. Just cake cutting. But all about the cake cutting. I think it's a sweet tradition. All right. We, uh, we've we kind of talked about this. Yeah. Uh, band or DJ? I mean, I love both. Right. I love both. But like you said, it depends. Do you want to hear it how it was meant to sound or yep. by somebody else doing it? And I'm that way. I love the energy of live music. I, uh-huh. love the, I love concerts. You and I see each other just about every time the amp stores are open. We see each other. Right. I love music. But I I like hearing it live. But then a lot of times you hear a cover and you're like, yeah, that just doesn't sound right. And it would be better hearing it from, you know, a DJ. Uh-huh. That's a personal. I can't answer that one, especially because who's sitting across from well, me? Well, I, it, it, I like bands, too. I, <laughs> right. I wanted a band at my wedding. Right. It was just too expensive. Right. So it, it breaks down into like what you just said or cost because the DJ is Fair a enough. lot cheaper than a lot the band. Cheaper. Agreed. 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 Um, and how much um, do you want? to have control of what you hear Agreed. like oh I, i'm dancing i hear oh i want to hear this song hear, mm-hmm. well the band doesn't know that song yeah they can't play that song That's but right. the dj you can Pulls play, you can play anything yeah well and also you got it's a space consideration you yeah. know with a band you're looking at at least a 12 by 16 stage yep. for most bands that's a cost that's a space issue uh-huh. as well so I, lo- I, I can see both. I love both. I've heard some amazing DJs. I've heard some amazing bands. Right. I've heard some terrible DJs and some terrible bands. So it's all a preference thing. It's all a preference thing. For and sure. with us, with Brock Entertainment, as you know, you know, we host as well. Absolutely. Some bands, they just perform. They're not exactly. hosts. They don't run things. So you've got to look at kind of an MC yeah. type position. That's right. So mm-hmm. we do all of the above. All of the above. Planner or DIY? Pass. DIY. All right. Okay. <laughs> Planner, that's obvious. That's what we talked about. Party favors. How do you, how do you feel about that? Because I've seen a lot of weddings recently that aren't doing yeah, party favors anymore. Yeah, I'm seeing more people pass on that. I think it's a sweet gesture if it if it relates. Right. You know, I like if it's like a cute little, I mean, one of my favorites a couple of years ago, we did, it was a smaller wedding, but, you know, maybe 100, 150 people. They did an individual cake for each guest. Oh, So wow. everyone got like, it was basically like the size of like three or four pedophores. So it was a small, beautifully decorated cake uh-huh. on every single guest place setting. So instead of giving them like bubbles and all the kind of, you know, silly little favors like that, they had something personal for each individual guest which i thought was really that fun. is cool i loved that mm-hmm. um, but if you if you don't need to do it then don't do it because okay, it's just yeah. an extra added cost yeah that most people if you sit it on a table if you don't keep reminding them they will not walk right on by take it they don't want a matchbook right. it's fun people i mean it's fun people some people do collect matchbooks i went a, a home with a lot of candles yes a lot of small bottles of champagne yes just random stuff because they're like nobody took them take, take as many some. as you want Okay, yeah, agreed, agreed. Uh, RSVPs, do you send in a card or do it online? I'm old school. I like it in an actual card with a stamp on it. But as the couple, make sure you're putting a stamp on there because your guest is not going to remember to put a stamp. It's not going to happen. I like that too. But once again, it's all about um, cost. It is. Online, free. Agreed. Card, a little bit more expensive. Yeah. All right, here's the next question. We're almost to the end. Okay. Should the brides and groomsmen, bridesmaids and groomsmen have to rent their own outfits for a wedding? Oh, cost. Or buy their own outfits? Cost. That's a hard one. You know, sometimes, we, and I think a lot of couples try to be conscientious of that uh-huh. and um, give their couples or give their bridesmaids and groomsmen the the flexibility if they, knowing that these people, they've rented these suits three or right. four times already in the past. They're like, just wear a black suit or, you know, just wear a black dress. We'll do a mix, whatever. Um, I see that more with, when I say older, I don't mean, but older couples, uh-huh. like couples that have been in multiple weddings in the last couple of years. Um, I, I don't feel like everybody feels like they've got to have everyone matching in perfect periwinkle blue. Right. Like, you know, I don't feel like that's as much, I think I'm seeing as much um, flexibility in the wedding party attire as anything. So I don't know. That's a tough one. I mean, I, I like, I like it when the family is able to provide that for the wedding party. So I, I had always been of, the uh, opinion that if I'm asked to be in your wedding, I shouldn't have to pay to be in your wedding. Fair but enough. when I got married, I couldn't afford to pay for my uh, wedding groomsmen party. Sure. Uh, as much as I would like to. For my brother's wedding, we ended up finding a suit shop that we could buy these suits and wear them multiple times. Right. So that, and it was really cheap. Right. Um, and then the bridesmaids in, the, in my wedding, we let them pick out one of like five dresses 
that they could buy right but they weren't just wedding dresses they could wear them at right. any time right that's the style that we went with so you're not just investing in a god-awful color that you'll never wear again agreed so we picked black and the bridesmaids wore a black dress but it's a dress that they could wear to a cocktail event or, yes or anything like yeah that. yeah um so while uh, yeah paying for it is nice because you're not, hey, you're my best friend, yeah. especially out of college. I was in my best friend's wedding, had zero dollars zero. and had to rent sure. a tux yeah. and painful. drive to his wedding in yeah. Texas. Like, oh my gosh. It's an expensive wedding and you hadn't even done anything. Nothing. I mean, you literally, yeah, you got there. So and was I was party. his best man and, and we went out for his bachelor party and I'm like, I got to find a way to not spend any money because oh <laughs> I don't have any money. I don't have anything. And guess what? I succeeded. Good All right. <laughs> uh, two more questions here. Uh, best way to send off the couple. Oh my gosh. I so guess tricky. it depends. Yeah, it depends. Um, gosh, you know, I'm my new obsession and I shouldn't even share this because I feel like it's my little dirty secret here, but I, my new obsession is these, um, things called finger slingers. And that sounds like the craziest name. Um, it's Where almost do you get like these finger slingers <laughs> online. <laughs> this website, Are they the dark family web friendly. Make yes, sure you very. don't have kids at the wedding. No, they're very family friendly. Finger no. slingers. Is there a different name for those? <laughs> No, like. very few venues will allow confetti, right? Because it's right. a disaster to clean up. I And when they do allow it, guess who gets stuck cleaning it up? Myself. So I found this product that is, it's kind of a cross between a yo-yo and like um, those New Year's Eve streamers that like you, know, you blow and like the streamers go everywhere. Yeah. Um, and they're long, like you literally put them in the cup, in the, in the wedding party's hands, the friend's hands, and like you count to three and you, you oh, yeah. throw your hand and these beautiful ribbons come out everywhere. I'm obsessed with it right now. Do they think stay on your fingers though? The, there's like a little rubber band that like holds the. So then you can throw them away. And then you can like wad oh, that's it up cool. and throw it away. It's, I've not seen those. I know. It's my new, it's my new little, my little thing. And every couple I've showed it to is obsessed. So like obviously that. you're going to see it a lot, but I think it's a, it's a no mess way to get a really fun picture. Sparklers, people still do them like crazy, but I'm scared to death of them. I've been burned so many times. No, right. Like so many or times. Or as a photographer. Oh, Get yeah. your suit burned. Uh, yeah. The wedding, the last wedding I did. I walked in and I saw the sparklers that they had. And if you don't get long enough sparklers, they won't last. Exactly. But they had long sparklers, but they were the ones that were the colored ones uh -huh. that are paper. And I, I, I looked at somebody, I go, uh, are these the ones we're using? Because these create the most smoke. They are the smokiest yes. ones. Yes. Yes. But There's, they didn't think of it. They're like, no, oh, they're just sparklers. Just sparklers. Like, no, like your You're picture gonna... will only be smoke we didn't use them because yes. it was way too windy thank goodness thank god yeah because literally it's only smoke you're coming out and you're like oh i can't see I can't. anything <laughs> yeah it's, it's the worst it's awful so yeah i'm i you know they make for cute pictures when they're done right but uh -huh. i i love when we can be creative and come up with something else i love I like real that. confetti i love real confetti and they have the confetti that that dissolves it's not good stuff. It what it it makes typically. I haven't found one yet that doesn't um, work like on concrete. Uh -huh. It turns into kind of a soapy residue, yeah. and venues won't allow it because it's dangerous. Okay, it'll stain the concrete. It, yeah. It'll eventually wash away. We have a couple good rains. See, I'm away. usually inside when you're all out. This is like you're like, I know, yeah. line up out. I know. Front. If they yeah. need help lining up, I'll do that. Yeah. But yeah, if you're in grass. It's a great scenario to be able to use biodegradable confetti. It yeah. it does kind of disappear, but yeah, on a on a concrete surface, um, that stuff turns into like I didn't know slippery that. soap. Mm -hmm. It's not, and good. we're not doing the uh, lanterns anymore, are we? Uh, no, sadly, no. And for I I think I told you this story before. I had a um, wedding in in a venue in Little Rock. We find out minutes before we're getting ready to do this lantern send off that. They're not allowed in the state of Arkansas anymore. Which oh, I didn't explains, realize that. Yeah, which explains why they're so difficult to come by. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't get some, like could not find them. And, and you, I love the you lanterns. found them? Found them <laughs> on the dark web. And I, um, so we were like, but they're like, if you, if one of those comes down, like we're going to be in so much trouble. Like, we'll be fine. We're pros at this. We've done this a hundred oh, times. Oh, it came it's down, great. didn't it? Every one of them landed in the fire department's yard. No! Every one of no, them. No, it didn't. I swear. Not every, okay, maybe not everyone, but the majority of it. Did and you the get fire in so much trouble? Yes. The fire department called the venue and they were like, 
these are illegal. If there is one of these that is found on the ground, you're getting fined ten thousand dollars for every one. And so oh we spent <laughs> we spent like the next three hours driving around downtown Little Rock, searching for um, these lanterns. Looked like ghosts piled up and you know everywhere. Oh, so, yes. yes. No, do you think get, didn't get fined? Didn't get fined. We I found remember them the all. First we were counting. Like, oh my gosh, how many did we send up? Mm-hmm. The first time we did one of these uh, lanterns, yeah, we everybody put them up in the air. It got stuck at the top of a tree. I'm like, oh my gosh, this tree that is dead. Not it's well. going to catch on fire. I'm getting the heck out of here. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's crazy. I love them. I really, I think lanterns are like one of my favorite things. I think they're, they're a little awkward to get lit, but like if you know how to do it, they're great. But yeah, I've had some, I've had some really It's not like the movie Tangled. It's, it's not, but it's that's the vision not. that I have yeah, of these it's just beautiful not. lanterns. It takes forever. I know. All right, last question. Yeah. Big over-the-top party or intimate gathering of your closest friends I mean, and family? I love a big old party. I love a big old party. That's, I mean, that's what I do. But I also love just having those most, the near and dear, because you can, what I see happening is people that when they are able to spend less on the big party, they're able to spend more per guest yeah. um, on their budget. And they're able to give them a bigger and better experience for their wedding. So, I mean, I tend to kind of lean towards this really beautiful intimate event, intimate affair. I had a giant wedding. So, I mean, I had a ridiculous big people? wedding. It was five or 600 people. Oh, my it was Lord, huge. Amanda. It was big. It was everybody. I bet I lived in a small town and yeah. my parents. You and invited like, the whole town. We invited the whole town. I mean, my parents knew everybody and they, they had a lot of connections that we had to invite. And I think it gets tricky when you get to those guest lists that are just so big. So, if I... You know, if I had to do it again, I probably wouldn't invite a third of those people. Yeah. That's terrible, but I probably wouldn't because I don't even know some of them at this point in my life. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of lean towards a really something, even whether it's small or not, but I mean, a smaller group. You don't need you to can, invite everybody. You don't have to invite I feel everybody. the same way. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. don't have to invite everybody you've ever met in your life. Right. Because then you're just spending more money and just do you really care if that person's there? Right. So my perspective has changed a little bit, yeah. you know, as I've gotten older um, on how... How many people is like the right number? And nobody has the right no. number necessarily. It's all about you. It's all about you. There you go. That's yeah. wedding opinions right there. Yeah. And those you are the questions. You know what they say about opinions. <laughs> I don't know. What they I, know I don't know. What do they say? <laughs> I was asking you. Right. So if you have any wedding opinion questions that you would like us to ask, yeah, you can always fun. let us know on social. Yeah. And we are going to post a link to the article that you wrote, How to Unplan a Wedding. Cool. You can find that on IDUIQ Podcast on both Instagram and and on our Facebook fan page. Thanks for sharing that we got too. Three fans. So. We have three. That's cool. Yeah. I'm not one yet. <laughs> no, I just un- unfanned our own page. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. No, but make sure to follow us. Um, we got a lot, a lot to get to. And if you have any ideas on what you would like to hear us talk about, you can let us know as That'd well. That'd be awesome. So. That'd be great. Very interactive, Amanda. It's been real. Super fun. Thanks for thanks for letting me be here with you. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening and make sure to subscribe and expect a new exciting episode each and every week. Please follow us on social as well at I Do IQ Podcast. If you have a guest recommendation or a topic you would like to hear discussed on the podcast, please let us know. The I Do IQ Podcast is recorded at the most amazing studio in Northwest Arkansas and by the most amazing and best looking people in all the world, Go Rogue X. You can follow them on social as well at Go Rogue X or visit them on Line at GoRogueX.com. They truly are amazing. And if you're looking to start a podcast, they are your go-to people. Also, a big shout out to our creative people, David Kinney from Forward all the way from the great state of Michigan. You can check his website out, TheForwardCreative.com for all your logo and design needs. And for more information on Brock and Amanda, please visit DJBrockEntertainment.com and AmandaReadWeddings.com. Thank you again, and we'll see you on the next episode.